In India, Philips Electronics is making access to healthcare facilities more affordable through custom-built clinical vans. These vans constitute a real business that combines the capabilities, technologies, and expertise of business using approaches developed by the nonprofit sector. The same impact has been made by the telecom industry in the Philippines. When Globe and Smart collectively brought down the cost of mobile phone services through innovations in technology platforms, the penetration rate of phones dramatically increased. Today, an astounding 80% of the population has access to a mobile phone to communicate with family and friends and to manage their businesses. We saw the same outcome in our experience in Manila Water, bringing piped water to communities that didn't have access to it at a fraction of the cost created a huge leap in people's quality of life and an enormous improvement in health, especially for lower income groups. But perhaps no other base of the pyramid business model is more powerful than microfinance. We all know how the Grameen Bank in Bangladesh introduced microfinance and radically transformed the lives of millions of people who otherwise would have had no access to credit. This model has been taken to most emerging economies where mainstream financial institutions are now moving into this space successfully. There are examples like Compartamos Banco in Mexico, Bank Andara in Indonesia, and ICICI in India. These institutions and many others are already serving millions of people around the world. With 80% of the population in the Philippines still unbanked, many people in our country are exposed to unscrupulous characters that lend them money at exorbitant rates. This will rapidly change as more and more institutions look into microfinance as a profitable business opportunity. Within our group, we recently decided to tap this sector by combining Globe's GCash technology with BPI's expertise in managing loan portfolios. Through a combination of technology and experience, we feel we can expand the reach of microfinance and bring down transaction costs in a profitable way to ensure its sustainability. Companies are clearly moving into sectors that were previously left to the NGOs or government agencies. They have shown that they can operate profitably within this space and give basic access to the poor. Companies like Pfizer, Unilever, Nike, Microsoft, Nestle, Petron, and Shell, and many, many others are aggressively looking for solutions to serve the broader base of the market. As these businesses can be profitable, you will see an enormous amount of innovation and resources being channeled to a sector that has been neglected for so many decades. In many cases, the lower income groups will be getting access to basic services for the first time. And in many other cases, the drive for efficiency in the private sector will allow them to get the services and goods at a much lower price than in the past. The third very positive trend is the move towards more strategic philanthropy. Philanthropic activities have dramatically evolved from being relatively small, sporadic distributions to larger, more strategic social consortiums. These cross-border and multi-sectoral partnerships enable programs to scale up and magnify their impact, benefiting entire sectors, cities, and even an entire country. The Bill Gates Foundation is perhaps the most prominent example. It uses its own resources and its partner institutions to strategically address infectious disease problems in developing countries. They support sustainable ways of delivering technology and invest in R&D for affordable interventions such as natural vaccines, low-cost repellents, and diagnostics. Their efforts apply the same kind of strategic thinking and discipline that made Microsoft a global enterprise. Another example, and one that we can see right here in our country, 
is the Shell Foundation's work with an alliance of over 200 international companies to combat tuberculosis and malaria in Palawan, Apayao, Quirino, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. To succeed, it relies on equally critical partnerships with various government units to ultimately eradicate these health problems. We are gradually witnessing the replication of these massive collab collaborations. I am very interested in the ongoing effort for an environmental cleanup and transformation of our very own Pasig River. A river that was once a source of life, a central feature of the city, a means of transport, and a center of economic activity has been denigrated into a dump site of human and industrial waste after 80 years of abuse. The Capit Bisig Parasailog Pasig project is a huge effort that only a multi-sectoral collaboration can manage because it needs a full range of solutions from housing, livelihood, clean water, to health services, education, sanitation, and waste management. The Pasig River represents an opportunity for a new approach and thinking towards such a critical resource. I have decided to get involved both personally and through the companies that I work with in the relocation effort for the people living on the banks of the river. Through Habitat for Humanity and other partners, we will help relocate all the families to new sites. I am fully convinced that under the leadership of Gina Lopez and the ABS-CBN Foundation, and with everyone's committed assistance, we can bring this river back to life again. Its success will show our capacity as a nation to solve problems of this magnitude in our country. It will invigorate our confidence to work together for a common cause. These three trends show that businesses and capitalism can actually be harnessed for greater positive impact in society. They can become a force for change as they have the tools and solutions at hand for the problems we face today. Across the world, societies clamor to put an end to the irresponsible use of resources, an end to environmental degradation, and the beginning of a new and better standard of living for itself and for its children. I have absolute confidence in this unfolding movement. Societies have always demonstrated a unique ability to adapt, adjust, and create solutions to problems at every critical juncture in history. But these solutions ultimately rest in all of us as individuals. If we do not have the individual willingness and capacity to work together and make a radical change in our ways, if we do not demand a higher standard for ourselves and from our leaders, if we do not reject apathy and mediocrity, we are doomed to muddle through, feeling frustrated and impotent to change our lives for the better. But if we do, even our own individual modest efforts, replicated and multiplied a thousandfold, can save our country from the slippery slope to economic failure and social dislocation. In this room tonight are some of the most creative minds in our country. You have the power to fuel the passion and the hope and the desire for every Filipino to transform our country into a vibrant, entrepreneurial, and caring nation. Let us all play our part in rebuilding our country today. Thank you all very much once again, and have a great conference. Thank you, Mr. Fernando Sobel de Ayala.